Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars. Today we're picking up a 1988 IROC Camaro that's been sitting in a storage unit for 27 years. This is a car I've always wanted. This is like your quintessential 80s Camaro. And some of you guys know that my very first car was a third generation F body. I bought a 1988 Trans Am GTA 350 with T tops right before I turned 16 years old and after working for Burger King for about a year and cutting grass and shoveling snow, anything I could do to get my hands on $3,550. That's what I paid for my Trans Am. But today we're gonna pay a little bit less for this Camaro. We're towing it with the supercharged Cadillac Escalade. We got our U-Haul trailer. That's about as much of an intro as you need. So if you're into videos that just get going and get right to work, give this video a like and don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Dude, I don't like that sound. Something is bouncing back there. I don't know if that's chains. That sounds like something's coming loose. Wow. All right, that'll do it. You gotta be kidding me. It's hot. Yeah, it's very hot. Ugh. Dude, I'm glad we caught that so quick, man. Let's snag some pictures of this to show you all. Wasn't our fault, that's for sure. This is the left side. This is the right side. It completely shaved the whole bottom off. Great. It was definitely clicked in when we left. I mean, we, we drove quite a bit with it not making that noise. Wow. All right. There we go. That is some max ingenuity right there. I wish we had another one. I'm worried about that guy now. I gotta say, this is one of the worst U-Haul car trailers I've ever seen. This is straight up rotting, just not in the best condition. There's a lot of rust on this guy. And uh, yeah, but anyway, we got two chains now holding these guys in. That should definitely fix it. Let's keep going. Something bad happened there. Welcome to Indiana, we made it. All right, dude, we're here. This is gonna be a very weird place to load a car up because it's in the middle of like a big road, but let's go check out my new Camaro. Hey, good morning. Wow, you weren't kidding about loading in the middle of the street. <laughs> Uh, you care if I pull the uh, tarp off so we can take a look at it? The tarp is goes with the car. Okay, I'll so. take it. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we don't peel the paint off here. <laughs> wow, that thing is really frozen on, isn't it? It's got some good 80s GM clear coat. Yeah, should be good. There right, we go. Hey, hey there, how you doing? <laughs> Give you a little bit more light. All right, so we have a locksmith out here who is disassembling yeah, the column here. He's already, you know, we're putting it back together. You're again. putting it back together? Wow. Yeah, you missed that. That was quick. Missed that I part. missed the good stuff. So yeah. you had to remove this, right? right. You had to remove the right. ignition pulled cylinder. That, pulled the steering wheel, took the cylinder off, and got the coat off the uh, ignition, and then made a key from it. Cool. Yeah, this car comes with no keys, or it came with no keys, and this has the old GM uh, chip in the key with the resistor. So I called the dealer. Uh, it actually doesn't. Oh, it doesn't? No. It actually doesn't. So, because when we pulled this, there's no electronics hooked up to this. And oh, nice. It's an 88, 89, they went to that. So, you gotcha. Got the right year. Sweet. So, it's going to be cheaper then, right? Yeah, a little bit. Cool. So, yeah, the car had no keys. Uh, it had no title as well, but Dave uh, went through the whole title process, lost title, and all that kind of stuff. He's the one yeah. who bought the entire storage unit, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so, it now has a clean title, which is great. But, yeah, so I had to get a locksmith out here to make the key. Uh, I brought a battery. We're not going to start it, but at least we'll be able to unlock the steering column and the shifter and get it on the trailer. So here it is, my 1988 IROC Camaro. We'll take a better look at this momentarily. Once the locksmith's done, he'll move his truck out of the way, which by the way, I've always wanted a Chevy box truck just like this. I want to modify it and turn it into like a camper man cave in the back or something. We'll get to that in another video. But uh, this thing so far, so good. Oh, wait a minute, no. No, not so far so good. It's the fender, so not the end of the world. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, fenders can be replaced easily. Quarters or what? Uh, okay. No. Uh, yeah, okay. I was a little worried about that. Uh, I didn't get too much of a description of what's going on here. Obviously, this is sight unseen, but okay. Not a big fan of the rust there, but it is a tuned port. I rock this does have the 305. It doesn't have the 350, unfortunately. If you guys were around for the Trans Am videos where I had 
a mouse in the LT1 Trans Am. We might have it. Yeah, we definitely have had mice in this thing too. Great, 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 great. This quarter doesn't look rotted, so that's nice. Oh wow, there's a straight up hole in the door. That's not good. Yeah, I, I thought it had very minimal rust to like what you showed me underneath, but this thing has a straight up hole in the door and the quarters are rusted. I didn't think the body had any rust at all from the pictures you sent. Um, so I'm still interested, but I mean, this thing's gonna need a ton of body work. <laughs> there's a hole? Yeah, there's a hole, there's a straight up hole in the driver door. This whole car is just like, yeah, it's not good. Honestly, the door and the fenders being rotted are like the least of my concerns because you can find those. It's the, uh, it's the quarter panels that I'm like kind of worried about. The locksmith is finishing up, but I need to do some serious negotiating because he said there wasn't any rust on the body. So we agreed on $3,000 and I can't pay that anymore, but I've already filled up the tires with our portable tire inflator. Max is editing a video and I'm charging a bunch of stuff with the Fantic Evo 300. Guys, I'm totally geeking out about this. I've been testing it now for a few weeks and it is absolutely amazing. So this is a portable power station that's super light, but that can handle charging and powering pretty much everything you're bringing with on a road trip, a camping trip, a picking up an 88 Camaro trip. So it has a total of nine DC and AC outlets, a massive 299 watt hour battery capacity and 300 watt AC power. This large LCD screen is so cool. It'll give you the watt hours and the amount of time left you have. So you know when you're gonna run out of charge. And when you do, it only takes two and a half hours to fully charge this if you plug it into a wall. But my favorite part is that you can hook up a Fantix solar panel right here. Here it is, the Evo Solar 100, super light, super portable, and in full sun, this will charge your Evo 300 in about three to five hours. So this is what the Evo 100 looks like, and it's connected to the Evo 300 right now. This thing you can put anywhere on a campsite or whatever, so if you're doing off the grid living, if you have an RV, a camper, or a box truck that you really wanna convert into some kind of camper, this is huge. And what I love is it is a pass-through, so you can be charging with the solar panel and have that connected to a bunch of devices so you can use this all day long. And basically, if you're like a weekend warrior, camper, off the grid type of guy, instead of having like six batteries and an inverter and all sorts of complication, you have everything in this tiny little package. Best part is I'm gonna leave you a special link and coupon code in the description box and comment section that will get you $67 off the Evo 300 power station and $44 off the Evo 100 solar panel. And with that, Let's continue on with my Camaro. But can we work on that price? Because this is, uh, I mean, buying a clean body one that doesn't run and that already has a lot of question marks, I don't think it's worth three grand with the rusted body. Once we lift it up, I'm just worried the floors are gonna be rusted too. And there's mice in the interior. There used to be mice. There used to be mice. They've all, <laughs> they've all frozen to death right now. But so, I don't know, I'm just, I know we'd said three, but the body on this is bad. Um, God, I mean. Give me a numbers. I mean, could you do 1500 for it? I mean, it's probably all it's worth, honestly. People will probably yell at me for paying that, but. <laughs> if I see a video where you sold it for 15 grand. Now, I'm not gonna sell it for, fine. the only way I'm selling it for 15 grand is if I put like 12 grand, <laughs> 12 grand into it. Into, into, you know. No, I don't know. I mean, yeah, if this car was stripped down and all the metal was repaired and there's no holes in the floor, it could be worth $15,000 in perfect condition, you know? But yeah, uh, yeah this is... After you, and if you took this and did $10,000... Right, it, I don't do body work. So like if you drop this off at a body shop and handed them a check for 10 grand for a quality paint job and everything, then yeah, it could be worth 15. But being a 305 hardtop with rust and who knows what the floor looks like and who knows if they parked it with a blown engine in 1995, like there's just a lot of question marks. I still love it and it's cool. I just don't, I think 1500 is probably just a fair price for it. Okay, I will trust you. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> and I've told you I know nothing about <laughs> No, I, uh, uh, not I, not my field of, of expertise. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, this would have on to go. On the other hand, if you want to sue something, somebody let me know. Oh, are you a lawyer? Okay. Well, don't sue me after watching the video, all right? I'm not guaranteeing I don't sell it for 15 grand later. It's just going to take a lot of money to do that. <laughs> all right, this is this is our 
<laughs> this is our disclosure. We're, nego we're negotiating, <laughs> and, and yes, full disclosure. Didn't have the keys. Right. Don't know if the engine is shot. Yep. Honestly, I didn't know the rust was that bad. I didn't even notice that thing. When I first side. saw the fender was rusted, I'm like, ah, no big deal. You can like swap out a fender, but then it's both fenders, it's that door, and then the quarter panel is what kills me because you can't just replace. I mean, you could just replace a quarter, but you can't buy a new quarter on these. And then I'm just worried about what's underneath, and then the mice, and then the engine, stuff like that. But I love mystery projects, so. <laughs> I have some goodies for. Ooh, a title and paperwork. Sweet. Title and the owner's manual. Okay. I don't think the warranty is still good. Oh, there's no warranty. <laughs> Deal's off. Deal's off, Dave. I'm going to need a warranty on this guy. <laughs> uh, not happening. Not happening. <laughs> there's the... Uh... Cool. Dude, this is awesome. Like, people sell this kind of stuff on eBay for nothing. I mean, they sell it for absolutely nothing, Dave. It's worthless. No, seriously, it's worthless. <laughs> This is one of the most fun negotiations I've ever had. For this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. It's uh, funny. We're gonna get Dave's story here in a minute because he bought this from a storage unit. You paid what, eight hundred dollars for the whole storage unit? Nine hundred bucks for the storage unit. Okay. We're gonna get that story in a minute, but we got to get some tools and figure out some stuff here uh, before the locksmith is done because we do need to load this up in the trailer. So, Dave, one I'll minute. Be around. All right. <laughs> All right. Percentage chances that these hood shocks hold this hood up. They're going down as we speak right now. No chance at all. Oh, no battery either, which is fine. We brought our own. Yep, all right, this is a Tune 4 305. Not that you can tell from looking at it like this, but I checked the VIN. What is that? Is that part of the alarm system? Probably. That looks like some it's ancient. It says security system. Yeah, right. that's not good. Oh. All right, guys, so I was able to negotiate this down to $1,500. Originally, we had agreed on three because the pictures he sent and, and what he described it as was like the body was like mint. And I'm like, three grand, that's that's pretty good, you know, for that. But I'm starting to get a good glimpse at underneath. And if you guys saw the 96 Trans Am video, I'm a little worried that it might be something along those lines. But anyway, I'm $175 deep into it already uh, with these two keys or three keys they gave me. And we needed that, obviously, to eventually start the car. But more importantly for now, unlock the steering column and get it into neutral. And then eventually to hopefully start this engine that totally didn't throw a rod before the guy stuffed it in a storage unit for 27 years. Anyway, as soon as he moves the box truck, uh, we're going to back that trailer up somehow into this little driveway and see what happens. This is going to be very interesting. All right. You guys can go ahead and just start commenting now that I didn't learn my lesson on the... Uh, the LT1 Trans Am, but this is gonna be fun to lift. I'll tell you that much. There's a lot of rust. Yeah. They brought a brand new battery. Not that we're gonna start this thing or anything, but we can get the um, windows up. Oh, this is frozen in there. Let's just see if this fits. Okay, what in the world? Man, there is so much. Look at this stuff. Chapman security system, and then there's something else right here that's not factory. Another Chapman something or other. Is this car gonna scream at us as soon as we give it power? We got lights, we got power. All right guys, here we go. This Camaro's alive, partially. It's telling me to fasten my seatbelt though. All right, let's see. Will this window go up? Of course not. Neither does that one. Hey, the trunk, the trunk open. Oh, I can hear something. Oh, come on. Oh no, this regulator is gone. Typical F body. Let's see what's in the trunk. I'm kind of scared. Okay, this is deja vu with the 96 Trans Am. This is literally the same thing. Just a few years older and a Camaro. Ugh. Okay. Okay. And was the guy literally building a home for mice? That's what it looks like. Let's see, does the power, does the power hatch still work? Does it, will it suck it down? It works. What a weird feature to have. Like in no way, shape or form did that sell the Camaro and Trans Am in the eighties and they removed it later on in the nineties. Why did GM feel the need to put a power latch for the hatch? It just makes no sense. Like, I don't know.
Yeah. All right, so I just wanted to see if we could break free the brakes because Max and I are really having no luck. Can't talk, it's cold. <laughs> uh, pushing this thing, so maybe that helped us out. I don't know, we're gonna try again. Here we go, ready? Oh, jeez. Oh, dude, that's not moving. This isn't moving. All right, change of plans. We're going to attempt to pull this thing out with the Escalade onto the street there because we're gonna block both lanes of traffic. I don't wanna do that. So if we can pull it right there, uh, you know, we'll have a little bit more room and time and then maybe the brakes will slightly unlock so maybe we can push this thing, I don't know. All right, so we're hooking up the trailer again. It rolled, it's right over there. So hopefully the brakes are a little bit more free now. All right guys, here's the setup. We're gonna try and manually get this thing on the trailer. Moment of truth, can I pull a Camaro with my arms? I'm that strong. I'm that strong, people. The only problem is once we get your cable all the way to the ratchet, how are we going to restrap this to the ratchet without this rolling off the trailer? Oh, you're going to stand behind it and oh, catch the car. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're about to destroy the bumper. So I just jacked up the car on this side. So now we have some bumper clearance and we just have to get this tire on the ramp and we should be good. Okay, we're clear now. We got tires are on. So let's get the jack out of here. Man, we're, we're doing real good. Tires are on there nice and straight. It's gonna clear the bumper. We didn't destroy anything. Max and I are professionals at this. It's definitely not the second time we've ever towed anything in our entire lives. Definitely not. All right. We're trading off here. My arm is, is beat. Oh, look at that. Max a beast. I gotta say, this thing is pretty sweet though. It's dirty. It's nasty. It's got some rust on it. Probably not. I'm a little worried about that too, yeah. From far away, this thing looks so sweet. All right, so I just put it in a park. We were off by like a foot, getting rid of the yellow strap a little too early. Luckily, it's very comfortable under this Camaro. Okay, all right, I don't, eh. getting too old for this. Ah. I hope I'm doing this for the next 30 years, honestly. This is awesome. <laughs> God, I want to start it so bad, but we can't. We would destroy the rings, most likely. These wheels say front and rear, although the tires are the exact same size. They're 245, 50, 16s. Good old Eagle VR50s. Wow, these are super old. All right, it's rolling. We're doing it. And I got to say, I love this color. I have a friend that has the exact same color, hard top 305, basically the same exact spec. And uh, he bought that car 22 years ago. I spotted it at a local Ford dealer, Golf Mill Ford, if you're from the area. And I told him about it and he went and bought it and he still got it and he lives like a block away from me. So we'll get that guy in a video. It's got 40,000 miles and it's mint, unlike this. So it's gonna smack me in the face right now. <laughs> All right, are we home free? All right, we got the Camaro all loaded up, ready to go. And something else that Dave found in this storage unit was that motorcycle, that Honda motorcycle right there. It was a 10 by 30, you said, right? A 10 by 30 storage unit. It was the first unit I saw at this auction. They opened the door up. Basically what I could see was a huge pile of paper grocery bags stuffed full of newspapers. Not wadded up newspapers, but whole copies of the Chicago Tribune, just filling the bags. But I can also see the motorcycle. But I got the locker unit for, I got the storage locker for $900.
Then I started emptying out the storage locker and discovered the car buried under all of that crud. So you had, you didn't even I see didn't the know, car when I you didn't walked know in. The car, I did not know the car was there. That's crazy. When it was put in the storage unit, they had put the hood up and filled the engine compartment with these bags full of old newspapers but yeah so the guy had the storage unit since 1995 the plates on there 1995 oh, all sorts of stuff in there all sorts of collectible stuff from the late 70s early 80s so aside from making 600 dollars from me selling the camaro for 1500 bucks what else you're gonna get the bike what else did, did you find anything else of value in there i, I well, know you there's threw a out most amount, of it right fair amount of cash Really? How I much, mean, how much? well, cash in the form of change. change. Okay, okay. Three or four hundred dollars. Okay. Um, Not a bad deal. But, but this stuff was in there too. Oh yeah. Dude, get out of here. This is awesome. I remember this stuff. Can you uh, throw some of this in the deal, Dave? <laughs> Fifteen hundred bucks was probably way too much for me to pay for this Camaro. Come on, let me bring one of these back to the kids. This is amazing. Um, Look at this. Dude, I want to buy a storage unit too. Is there a Camaro in here? We got a Countach. I don't know if there's a Camaro in here. Oh, is this an Elante? Yes, it is. That is really cool. A Chevy Blazer K5. Nice. This is bringing me back, man. Wow, look at that. So, how much was this thing? It's from Montgomery Ward. Who remembers that? 26 bucks. A toy like this nowadays would be like $100. All right, can I get the K5? Sure. Yes. All right, Dave. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It was uh, interesting. I hope on. it works out. Me too. We'll see. Hopefully in the... I'll watch the videos. We're going right back to Legit Three Quarters right now. Well, thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. All right, so we're hitting the road. Is that a Matchbox car? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I got a K5 Blazer. Dude, Dude, he had a whole bunch of this stuff, man. It was awesome in there. Holy cow. This is old. Yeah. Dude, 87. Yeah, it's all from the storage locker. Holy cow. Who knows how long that thing's been since? No, literally, it says 1987 Yeah, some of them are the from the 70s. Holy cow, dude. This Escalade is a total beast. We got the louvers open and the fans going crazy. Wow, this thing will suck your hand in. But uh, it's keeping that transmission very nice and cool. I think it's only getting up to like 160, 170, something like that. And I just pulled over just to double check everything. We're about 20 miles out and so far so good. And I actually believe that this is one of the storage units, I'm not sure which one, uh, that he bought it at. He said it was about 20 miles from here and it was a big place. And this very well could have been where this Camaro was fished out. So anyway, Camaro is looking good. Trailer is looking horrible. This is probably the worst U-Haul trailer I've ever gotten. Um, but let's go to legit street quarters. We gotta move this thing around. We'll pop it up on the lift and see exactly what I got myself into. <laughs> All right, guys, so trans temp is at 180, but look at the engine temperature. It's not even registering, and we've been on the road for like 40 minutes or something. When we were driving here without the car in the trailer, it was just at normal operating temperature, and now it's way, way below. We're still getting heat in the truck, but a little weird, not gonna lie. I wonder if we're gonna get a check engine light for a thermostat issue where it's just stuck open. All right, so we got the Camaro back at legit street quarters, and I'm going to attempt, keyword attempt, to back up the trailer into my shop here. But first we gotta move some of the fleet around.
It's on the scrape. All right, it's off. Cool. Thank you, ML. All right, guys, so it's a couple of days later, and uh, this Camaro won't move. It won't budge at all. So I've jacked up the back. The rear tires are off, and... Uh, yeah, we could push it before after we kind of broke it loose before. Max and I have both tried. It's not moving, so these brakes must be kind of like re-locking up. Um, so yeah, we could winch it again with the ML, but the battery's dead. I want to try the Lightning. All right, we're gonna do a little tug of war with the Camaro. I promise this is the last thing I ask of you, Lightning, before I do your head gaskets. Yes, I'm gonna replace the head gaskets. Look, they're right here. They're right here. I'm gonna do it. I just needed to tow one last car, a third gen. The Lightning brought us closer, but we have to winch it the rest of the way using a lift. Totally does not void the warranty on your Benpack lifts. This is totally fine. <laughs> Ran out of slack, so we're attached to that one now. And I mean, this thing is just grinding to a halt every time. It's weird because we did push this at one point. Yeah. I don't get it. All right, now for some reason it'll move a little bit. See that, we're pushing it. Awesome. All right, this is about as good as we could get it. So it's lined up pretty well. It's just everything under there is rusted. All the jacking points where they've jacked it up a million times are kind of smushed in. So we might hear some crunching noise. Let's do it. Oh, I heard some crunches. They're gone now. We've crunched whatever there was to crunch. Camaro's up in the air. <laughs> oh, I'm scared, guys. This is gonna be worse than the LT1 Trans Am. Very well could be. Why do I keep doing this? All right, the Camaro is safely up on the lift. So, first things first. Okay, yep, that's why we couldn't push this thing. The front right wheel is locked. This one is locked also. And let's see, it's got drums in the rear. This is what I would have assumed. Wow, are you serious? These are fine. These are both fine. It's the fronts. So just frozen from sitting. Um, so anyway, let's, uh, let's start this inspection. And uh, right off the bat, we have literal rust holes. Wow. This entire, this is horrible. Oh, geez. Okay. Not starting off. Not starting off well, that's for sure. The frame structure seems to be intact. That's good. But uh, this car is a pile. This thing is a total pile. Oh man, this might be worse than the Firebird. Wow. Just the rust has destroyed this. You know, for sitting inside of a storage unit for so long, I wouldn't think it would be this bad, but I think this car just had a rough life its first, you know, 10 or 12 years when it was actually on the road. But then I found out from Dave that this had been sitting in his driveway for the last two years. So I didn't understand that when I bought it. I thought he had just plucked this thing out of the storage unit like two months ago, and then he had to deal with the title issues and stuff. Right when I was leaving, he's telling me the story about how long it took him with the attorney to, uh, to get the title. I'm literally ripping pieces of the car off as we speak. Um, and he said it took two years. So I'm like, wait a minute, two years? And yeah, it turns out he's had this car for two years in his driveway. Now that's not gonna cause all of this just sitting there. It definitely didn't help, but this car was probably really rough when it went into the storage unit, and it's even more rough now. So the LT1 Trans Am had literal holes in these areas here. So this one is better in that sense, but I mean, realistically, it, it might as well have a hole here. Like, you wouldn't want to leave this alone. Let's see here. Yeah, I mean, this is just bad. This is really bad. All the floors would have to be replaced if you were doing any kind of real restoration on this car but I can push this with my thumb. So I bet you if we took a screwdriver, we can go right through, right through the floors. So let's get the factory catalytic converter. I'm gonna go ahead and assume this 200-ish horsepower 305 is totally stock. And what do we have going on here? 
The motor is relatively dry, might be completely empty on oil, but those are just minor details. Um, and uh, let's see, the subframe is intact. I guess that's good. These brakes are just rock solid. So it would need pads, rotors, calipers, everything, probably hoses. And I mean, everything's there, it's intact. I don't suspect it was wrecked or anything. All these brackets look factory. But I mean, just everything is rusted. Yeah, great. Another weak spot is right here where the shocks kind of mount into the body of the car. This is all rusted. This is very weak. So the structure here is probably compromised and uh, I wouldn't want to hit too big of a pothole with this car, but yeah. Fender is no big deal. Doors, eh, we can fix it. Quarters, okay, that can be done too. But the overall structure, all the floors, everything on this Camaro, I mean, this would need a frame off restoration. Everything is just shot. And there you have it, my 1988 IROC Camaro, or at least what's left of it. It looks pretty darn good from here, but uh, yeah, pictures can be deceiving. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty disappointed right now. So I went into this very excited to get a really nice third gen. So it was described to me, pictures were sent, which you just can never go off the pictures, guys. Um, but it was described as a rust-free car. He had taken some pictures underneath of just like the pinch welds and I saw a little bit of rust. I'm like, no big deal. Um, but this thing is shot. So I just really wanted another third gen. And I, I love the IROX. I love this color. I love the wheels. I love everything about 80s F-bodies. And uh, I was looking forward to doing a mechanical restoration to working on a car that had been sitting for 25 or 27 years, whatever the math is. Uh, and I was even willing to put some paintwork into this thing. We're gonna put a little bit of money into it because it would be worth it. These cars in good condition can be worth about 15 to $20,000. So I thought a rust-free IROC at $3,000 was a pretty good deal. And uh, it would have been, but you know, we got this. So I'm disappointed that I don't have a cool third gen, but I'm not upset at the $1,500 that I spent on this clean title IROC because I'll more than break even on this car. Even as a parts car, this thing is worth a bunch of money. The hood on eBay is about 400 bucks. The rear hatch with the glass is about four or 500 bucks. The wheels are 500 bucks. These factory bumpers, which are in excellent condition, are about 500 bucks each. The interior, there are a ton of good parts on this car. So $1,500 is still, you know, a pretty decent deal. But uh, I'm not gonna part it out. I'm going to get this thing running. So in the next episode, I mean, I hope I am. I, who knows, this engine could have thrown a rod or something. Um, but in the next episode, we're going to pull the plugs. We're going to boroscope the cylinders. I'm assuming the engine's locked at the moment. So we're going to try and unlock it. We're going to try and fire it up. We're going to try and drive it. I want to enjoy my 88 Camaro before I do something with it. I don't know what that is yet. Let me know in the comments, what would you do with this car? So with that, I hope you enjoyed this little Escalade Camaro picking up adventure. As much of a disappointment as the car is, I still had a ton of fun. So with that, give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. Share the video with your friends. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Facebook and on Instagram for little updates here and there. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.